like to call to order the Scarborough School Board Business Meeting. Today is November uh, 15th, and this is the Scarborough Board of Education Business Meeting. Number 2.0, adjustments to the agenda. There are no adjustments to the agenda tonight. Uh, agenda item 3.0 is public comment on agenda items. Are there any members of the audience who would like to speak on an agenda item? Seeing none, we'll move on to 4.0, superintendent's report. Um, a couple of things. Um, first, I want to just share uh, publicly, now that we're in a televised meeting, uh, the statement that I shared earlier with the school board introducing our new members. Um, so I'd like to start by welcoming our five new school board members, Alicia Giftos, Nick Gill, Amy Glidden, Sarah Layton, and April Sider. Each individual has a unique background and set of skills that they bring to this board. Three of our new board members are Scarborough High School alumni. This says a lot about the good work that, are, that has been happening in our schools for many years. I'm excited to work with a board that has such a diverse expertise, which I believe will serve them well. Great school boards are able to leverage such differences, differences in order to cooperate and work together to do what is best for our children. Indeed, being children-centered is a mandate for school boards and working collaboratively with each other and the superintendent is crucial. I want to publicly commit to doing everything I can in order to help members of this board find strong processes and a high level of cohesion. In Scarborough, our election occurs in November. This is unique. Many communities in Maine hold their elections in the spring, which allows time for transition and orientation of new school board members. Starting their tenure during the fall term can be challenging. We are in the middle of many important big projects, um, such as redefining our professional development system, assessing uh, the high school grading and reporting practices, long range facility planning, contract negotiations, and budget development. Getting up to speed with these projects, finding cohesion and understanding what is and is not the responsibility of a school board can be challenging. However, I'm confident that this board is up for the challenge. I would be remiss not to mention the contention that has gone into this school board election and the recall this past spring. One of the issues that's been repeatedly raised is my contract. Missing in the conversation has been if I'd be interested in staying past June. Given the challenges this board faces and the need to focus 100% of their time on doing what is right for our children, I wanna take this issue off the table. So to be clear, I will not be seeking a new contract or an extension in any form from this board. However, as I've done since my arrival, I will work extremely hard to always do what is right for our children and to help this board in every way that I can between now and the time my contract ends in June. The next part of um, the superintendent's report is to talk about the comprehensive needs assessment planning team. So recently there was a press release that went out to the Scarborough leader um, inviting community members to join our comprehensive planning team um, as we move forward. This is not something that we're required to do at this point in the process, but it's something that we believe is healthy and will be productive um, to A, engage our community, but also to ensure that we are making evidence-based decisions that are best for our students. And so in the press release, um, we are calling for additional members to join those who have already participated in the initial comprehensive needs assessment. Um, this is something that the Department of Education will require us to do every five years, but we don't want this just to become a report that gets submitted to the DOE and then sits on a shelf. We want this to be a living, breathing document that guides our work um, and helps us make informed decisions. And so last um, spring, we chose to consolidate the working sessions of this group. We had teachers, we had parents, we did not have as many parents and community members as we would like. We had administrators and we did not have any students, I don't believe, um, initially. And so what we're trying to do is um, kind of make this team a, a bit more robust and a bit mo more diverse um, as we move forward. And so, so far, last I checked, we had 21 people um, who have applied. Additionally, we put um, Kathy Terrell, our improvement strategist, uh, emailed all of the 18 members who were a part of the initial comprehensive needs assessment and you know, invited them to apply, reapply, to continue this work over the next year. 
We um, also posted it on our intranet so that all staff have access to it, and of course it's on our website. So um, our goal was to have it, the application open until tomorrow so that we could then review all of the applicants and begin to plan a meeting for December. So what we've done is um, booked out in our calendars, um, Kathy, Monique, and I, two days in December that we'll then send a doodle poll out to those who finally, who become um, selected to be a part of this group. And really, right now, I believe we had um, 16 parents and 11 residents, but some people are parents and residents, so we have to just like parse out that data a little bit more. And there will be some people who have to be on the team um, internally. For example, our Title I um, coordinator will have to be on the team um, as we use that data and that this process to help with some of our um, federal and state reporting that we need to do. So we're looking to have two students, two community members, two parents, two district administrators, two building level leaders, four to six teachers, one school board member, and then two facilitators that will fa plan and facilitate the meetings um, so that they are productive. We're hoping to have a meeting in December, um, as I said earlier, then again in March, intentionally before the budget is finalized so that if there is any budgetary requests or needs, we're able to consider those in the budget proposal. And then um, again in May to kind of look at end of year, and that might end up being June, um, but May or June timeframe to look at end of year, you know, what are the goals of the district? How did we, um, how are we doing in terms of making progress toward those goals? And um, this, doc this process was a, was a great process for us, um, not just because the DOE said so, but because it's really healthy for us to have these metrics at our fingertips. And it has opened up our eyes to some critical areas that need improvement and immediate intention. One um, in particular is chronic absenteeism. I think that some people would be surprised to know that Scarborough does have a chronic absenteeism problem. Um, and we're, uh, that data will be shared in December. So in our next newsletter, we're trying to sort of like front load that and educate people around, well, what does our absenteeism data look like? That came directly out of this process. Um, the other thing that we did was we utilized the areas of strength and the opportunities for improvement from each of the phase levels to develop our three district goals um, that we have this year. And those goals are on our website, um, but I'll give you kind of a high level overview. The first district goal really is much what I'm talking about here, which is to uh, develop a district wide improvement process. Um, and we're using the data wise model as sort of the foundation um, or the the conceptual framework, if you will, for that work. The second goal is to hone in on that improvement process. The first step is organizing for collaboration. And so some of the strategic actions that have occurred toward that end include redesigning our professional development and looking at what kind of time do we create for, um, or do we, do we create for teachers to actually co-labor with job alike teams? Um, that's been an improvement that we've made this year. And the third goal is that each building would create a building-specific SMART goal, which um, SMART goals, I think most people know, that just stands for specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-bound. And we felt that that was really important because although we want to have um, some, some commonalities across the district, each building, each phase level has very unique needs, and we wanted staff to be able to work with their administrators to identify what those goals would be. And so the middle school is looking specifically at their grading and reporting um, and measuring that and being really specific about what they're trying to accomplish there. Um, K-5 is looking at writing, specifically narrative writing, across um, those their phase levels. And I think it's exciting that they have a common goal and they're developing processes toward district goal one and two for teachers to actually be able to collect that data, look at that data, and make informed decisions. And the high school, really is developing their goals specifically on the NEAS recommendations. Um, so again, we want our staff to work smarter, not harder, and thinking about if we already have this charge um, in terms of the NEASC accreditation recommendations, then let's make that also our district goal so our teachers aren't getting pulled in a bunch of different directions. Um, so it's really helped us streamline our work and get much more clear on um, what our goals are and writing actual measurable goals, which is not something that we have, have done in the past. Um, and then all of the individual administrators, um, both school level and district level, 
and we've encouraged teach and also encouraged teachers are writing their personal professional practice goals that align up to those district goals. So we're trying to create this sort of funnel system where we're all, you know, in the same boat, rowing in the same direction towards these these common goals. And the the closer you get to the students, the more specific the goal gets. So my goals are very broad because I'm thinking about my role as a district leader. Principals would be tighter and more specific, teachers even more specific, and then um, you know, ideally our students are also setting goals that align to, to those district goals. So am I, Kathy's here and Monique are, is here and I appreciate you guys staying. Um, is there anything I'm forgetting about the process that you would want to stand to the podium and add? <laughs> so we can hear you. <clears throat> Keep in mind, we're all new. <laughs> um, just the one piece that after... Oh, Kath, can you introduce yourself? Oh, yes, I'm Kathy Thank Terrell. I'm the improvement strategist. Um, the CNA committee, they have, there were representatives at each phase level, but part of their task was after a meeting, they would take the work back to their leadership team and the leadership team would all weigh in and work on it and bring it back. So it was more than just the members that were on the steering committee that worked on it. Okay. So I tried to give you a big overview. I know that was a lot at once. Are there any specific questions? I have some. Uh, um, so in terms of notification of teachers, if I heard you correctly, that was through the internet, um, the, the leader mm -hmm. um, right up and through the website? So if they were a part of the CNA originally, that, that 18 member group, they got a direct email from Kathy um, requesting that they continue. Our hope is that they would be able to continue. Um, then we also, yes, it was posted in the leader on our website and we have an internal website called the intranet it was posted there in as well. China. Okay. Yeah. Um, so if all of the um, teachers that participated last year uh, opt in again, there will be no room for new teachers? Um, well, I think what we want to do is be able to take a look at who all has responded. I don't think yet we have, we, we don't have confirmation yet on that. So once we have all of the responses, we can look at it. and. You know, we set these initial parameters because we try to think about what's a manageable size, of, you know, team to be actually productive and allow for lots of voice and um, opportunity to contribute. And that it's always hard because someone, you know, then you have to say someone's not going to be selected. But um, we've also been flexible in the past, like with our K-12 PD redesign team that met over the summer, we had specific parameters, kind of a configuration that we aimed for, but then we were close to those numbers and we said, can we find the funds to support having a few extra teachers be a part of it just so that we have, we were able to accept everybody. So instead of having 31 members, we had 36. Is um, it possible to extend the date out a little bit so that you can email all of the teachers and, and see what the response would be if it went out district wide? So it did go out district wide. How? Through the internet, that's how we communicate with staff. So they, they all get have a access notification to that. that way. Yep. Okay. Yep. Julie, I, I, I was I was hoping that um, I I saw that it was four to six teachers. I think you guys mm -hmm. were looking for it, in addition to maybe the the teachers who were on the first phase last last spring. Um, ideally, I think it would be great if we could have a teacher representative from each school. Me too. So not yeah. not a pocket of um, middle school teachers or. Wentworth teachers, if we could have one representative from the six schools in the district, that would be really good. That would be ideal, and that's really where that four to six number comes mm -hmm. from. Ideally, we would have one from each building, right. but often K-2 will come together with like a teacher who represents K-2. Yeah. Um, and in addition to what's not on the list, um, we will also have two SEA members, um, which is our Scarborough Education Association. Um, they just selected their leadership yesterday and we asked for them to give us members. So they've designated um, Denise Blaine, who's a high school teacher, and Doug Bennett, who is a middle school teacher, who will be a part of, of this team too, which wasn't originally listed on the configuration because right. it, wasn't, it wasn't open. They, they nominated those folks. Right. What, um, 
You said that the high school is working on the um, recommendations from the NIAS. Mm -hmm. Can you, um, do you know what those recommendations are? There's several. Um, what I can do is share with the board, um, I don't know if it's on the website, if the full NIAS report's on the website yet or not. We're also planning for the high school to do a NIASC update presentation for this board, um, either in December or January, depending on the other priorities, so that you can hear firsthand from them the good work that they're doing uh, to meet some of those, those recommendations. Would you be open to um, having board members help choose um, the members of that committee? Yeah, I think that um, once we have a chair, it'll be much easier for us to kind of get organized and plan how to move forward, but I think it would be helpful to have a board member um, do that work. So Kathy and I are the ones that are receiving all of the um, applications, and our goal is to kind of suss that out. We have some <coughs> initial criteria that we were looking for and stated it in the press release, um, and then get input from the leadership council as well. One thing I'll add, um, we also received a, uh, a communication from a community member who is a leadership coach for the Department of Education commending us on our process. Um, and she said that she had passed along our article in the leader to the Department of Education because she believes that it's, it's a, model, a model procedure. And we're really excited about this because I think we've taken something that could have felt like a you know, a compliance exercise, and we've really turned it into this robust, dynamic improvement um, process. And so we're excited to have so many community members be a part of it as well. Any other questions or comments about that? And I just have one last thing under the superintendent's report to share with all of you. Um, I know you're, you guys have really been impressive in your question asking and your um, information gathering. And there's another opportunity coming up um, on November 30th. It is an all-day workshop. It's in Auburn, Maine, but it's collective bargaining for school board members. And knowing that we will be negotiating our largest contract, the teacher's contract this year, um, I wanted to just extend that to the board as a possibility. All right, that concludes my superintendent's report. Um, item, agenda item 5.0, new business. 5.1 is the election of school board chair. So what I'll do is first ask for any, for all nominations for school board chair. And then um, after all nominations are on the table, we can have a discussion. Those nominated, feel free to advocate for yourself and why you'd be a great chair. Those nominating others, feel free to also um, advocate for the person you're nominating and why you think they would be a good fit. And then um, after <coughs> that happens, we'll need to have a motion to elect a person to the chair if there's multiple, multiple nominees. After the motion, we'll need a second. And then there will be an opportunity again for discussion. And in that discussion, you can discuss, you can ask questions, um, you can also request amendments to the motion if that's something that you so choose to do. Once we finally have the motion and we're done discussing, uh, I will then ask for a vote. Um, and when one of you becomes the chair, I will move my seat to wherever you're sitting and you will sit here in this spot with this tool to control this crowd. <laughs> Are we ready? Okay. Do I have any nominations for school board chair? Um, go ahead. I'd like to nominate Leanne as the school board chair. Okay. Second. I second. <laughs> Third, fourth, Third. Half, six, seven. <laughs> Do I have any other nominations? Okay. Seeing none. Do I have a motion to elect Leanne Casleonis as school board chair? So moved. So moved. Second. Discussion? <clears throat> Hillary? I'll just say um, I think that um, having somebody who has, I mean, I know it's not very much, but the year under your belt is probably beneficial because the chair is asking one person to do a lot. Um, and I think that Leanne has shown that she's really organized and that she can listen. Um, she changes her mind or not based on discussion. Um, and um, 
I think that she is very measured and can represent us well as the chair. I, w I would just like to echo that and, and to say that I have been um, in our in the week since I think I think about a week that I've been sworn in. Mm -hmm. I've I've um, seen Leanne in her vice in her vice chair yet kind of chair position um, to be wonderful in how she's interacted with us and the support that she's given us, the knowledge that she has um, conveyed to us. And I too also think that um, her thoughtfulness and, and her temperament will will serve us well. Any other comments? Are we ready to vote? All those in favor? You can vote for yourself, can I? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> None opposed? <laughs> All right, so now I will switch and Leanne will do the same process for school board chair. Congratulations, Leanne. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yes. before I move into the next motion, um, for folks that probably don't know my background, I've actually been involved with another district on a, a sundry type committee, um, but it was a nonprofit, and I did chair them, so thank you for having confidence that I can transition from that to this, and look forward to working with everybody. I'm pretty excited. All right, so 5.2, the election of the school board vice chair. Is there a motion? I would like to nominate Nick Gill as vice chair. Second. Any other nominations? Okay. Any discussion? Well, I guess I'll say something. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, just to kind of dovetail on what Leanne said, I, I have a good deal of experience with governance in the community college setting. Um, I've served on the central governance board and also chaired several committees, so I'm excited to transition that work and learn a lot in the coming uh, months, weeks, and, and even years um, on what this type of, uh, or year really, on what this type of role entails. And so I'm, I'm very excited, I'm very honored. Um, and I think that having a chair that has the experience that can show that continuity of leadership is really important for this group because as everybody in this room knows, there are five of us that are brand new to this within the last week. Um, but I also think it's really important that we show uh, in the leadership um, a member from the new uh, group. So I think it's a great combination and I'm really excited about it. And, and I'd, I'd just like to add that um, as um, the campaign season was um, going on, I, I said to as many people who would listen to me that Nick Gill was the most qualified candidate in the 15 candidate race for school board in a very, um, I think, great pool of candidates. So I think that it's um, a very natural fit for him to serve as vice chair. Thank you. Great. Can I have a motion? Ready to vote. Oh, ready to vote? Yep. We already have a motion. Oh, thank you. All right. All those in favor? So moved. Congratulations. Thank you. All right. All right, 5.3 appointments. 5.3.1, middle school athletics. The recommendation is to appoint middle school athletics coaches as presented. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? Okay. Ready to vote? All those in favor? Motion passes. And 5.3.2, Wentworth School co-curricular appointments. The recommendation is to appoint the Wentworth School co-curriculars as presented. So moved. Second. Okay. Any discussion? I actually had a quick question. Um, I just noticed when I was looking through the data the other day, or maybe it was yesterday, that some of the uh, different groups have two um, different, um, I guess I'd call them advisors, and some have one. Is that related primarily to attendance with that group, or just as more kids involved? I was Number just wondering. Of Number of students. Okay. Yeah. I was wondering. Thank you. Yeah. Sure. And just for 
your education, um, there is an actual rubric that is utilized that also determines what the stipended amount is. Oh. So there's uh, kind of like a sort of algorithm to determining that as well. Thank you. For, for the co-curricular activities, is there an uh, activity fee for those students selecting to participate? Mm -hmm. Yes. I, so I'm 25? 25. At Wentworth? $25 for I Wentworth. It's, I thought it was 75. But at the high school and middle school at Wentworth, I think it's 25. So, it's so those kids are, are, are paying to do it. But I just would like to say that, you know, my daughter's participated in some of those co-curricular co activities, and it's really great, especially for kids that don't, you know, engage in sport activities. It, mm -hmm. it really allows them to supplement their education, and so it's something that I think is really important, and it's so impressive, the extensive opportunities for them. So It really is. It's, yeah. it's a great program. I don't think we voted. We didn't vote. <laughs> we didn't All right, vote. we're ready to vote? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thought we had gotten there. All those in favor? All those in favor. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's going to take a day. Motion passes unanimously. All right, it'll get better, I promise. Okay. All right, it's been a long night. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Are we ready to vote? All right, seven and L. Thank you. Thank you.